Our second Fetty Award winners are Mark Trajam and Jack Kasky of Bloomberg News for deadline coverage of the explosion in West Texas and their continued follow-up stories that uncovered widespread regulatory violations. Here's a brief clip from the U.S. Chemical Safety Board on that event. With the wind blowing that way, it should collapse. April 17th, 2013. A massive ammonium nitrate explosion at a fertilizer storage and distribution facility devastated the town of West Texas. The blast killed at least 14 and caused hundreds of injuries. Last April 17th, an explosion at the fertilizer plant in West Texas devastated a small town and killed 14 people, as you just heard. While the fire was still burning, our colleague Mike Lee was sent down to the tragedy site. First thing the next morning, our editors gathered in Washington and they asked the simple question, how could something like this have happened? They sent Jack and I out to figure out what had happened and why. I knew nothing about chemical safety earlier that morning. But over the next days and weeks, we spent hours on the phone with experts in the field, and we delved through documents to figure out what kind of regulation existed and what kind of gaps existed. We found outdated regulations, warnings of risks dating back to the Oklahoma City blast in 1995, and a legislative overhaul that had been scuttled by industry pressure. Since the explosion, the federal government has moved to act. There's been congressional oversight. There's been an administrative wide effort to, to come up with new regulations. But as you'll hear, um, there still hasn't been much changes uh, in the landscape. Before I hand it over to Jack, uh, I want to thank my editors, Susan Goldberg, Tim Franklin, John Morgan, and Steve Guyman, for pressing us to, to take on this story and give us the time and the space to do it. I'd also like to thank uh, my parents who are here tonight, Bob and Linda Drajum, and my wife, Barbara. Yeah, one of the first things I noticed when we were researching West was how hard it was to get information on whether the, um, ammonium nitrate, which was the cause of the explosion, how uh, widespread it was in communities across the US took me several days to get it from Texas, and I realized the obstacles to obtaining this information meant other communities probably were oblivious to the explosives next door. So I said about finding how, finding how common uh, West type fertilizer retailers were across the country. I used company websites and interviews and public record requests and even Google satellite images to um, identify the dozens of towns that I found were ammonium nitrate retailers located in or near downtown areas, just like in West. Uh, one, of the, one of the largest retailers was LSB Industries, which is a publicly traded company with a history of plant explosions and fires. Uh, it had a large retail operation in Texas, about a dozen stores or so. I made the drive from my base in Houston to Corsicana, south of Dallas, not far from West. Um, when I got there, everyone, of course, had heard about the explosion in West. But almost nobody knew that the, L the LSB facility uh, called El Dorado, a farm retailer in their downtown, had tons of ammonium nitrate piled up in wooden storage bins. Uh, <clears throat> and it was permitted to hold far more ammonium nitrate than the amount that had leveled west. There was no security in this facility. I walked right through <clears throat> uh, for several minutes before the chain smoking manager invited me into his office. <laughs> The fire chief, thank goodness, was aware of the danger, but even he vowed to review his procedures as I told him about how most people in his community were in the dark about the risk of catastrophic explosion. 
I mean, this is a town that's about a mile square, and the whole thing could be leveled. <clears throat> those remiss, those, uh, these risks remain in farm communities across the U.S. Um, that, and that's what our story, our story showed. Um, in addition to uh, our team leader, John Morgan's fantastic job pushing us to write more and better stories, I want to thank my, my personal team leader, Simon Casey, for freeing me up for the project and to, uh, in particular, senior executive editor, Laurie Hayes, who since she's come to Bloomberg has brought a culture that prizes enterprise reporting as much as breaking news. And of course, I want to thank my, my mother who made the trip down here from Philadelphia and my wife, Robin. Thank you.